Hi, I'm Guy Harrison. I'm the uh, founder and CTO of Proven DB, and um, I want to give you a quick hands-on demo of Proven DB and the Proofable API. So let's start with Proven DB. Proven DB is a MongoDB compatible blockchain integrated database service. So it looks and acts a lot like MongoDB. So let's jump in here, shall we, and have a look at um, how it looks. So um, Let's start. I'm just going to start by putting a command in here um, that'll just make things run a bit quicker. Uh, it just reduces the number of multiple checks we do on every data access for integrity purposes. Um, and so we can insert data into here, just as we do with any other MongoDB database. Here I'm inserting a couple of documents. Um, I'll run an update statement. Uh, and I'll run a couple of other updates. I'm changing this attribute rating for Guy and Michael. Um, Michael being the team lead in the engineering group. So um, you might notice here that in the prompt it says it's been incrementing the version as we go up. ProvenDB is a version database. Every time we make any change, we're changing the version of the database. And we can look back at other versions. So for instance, let's have a look at how um, my record looks now and you can see my name's Guy and I've got a rating that is 13 and the prompt says we're on version 5. So let's go back to version 4 and have a look at what it looked like then. Here you can see at version 4 I had a rating of 11. Um, and so we can move backwards and forwards in time through the database. I'm um, looking at different versions and seeing what um, what happened and we never by default discard any of that version. So as you're doing updates, we're keeping all the old versions and you're always able to have a look at them. And there's a special version current, which is the one, the leading edge of the versions, if you like, where we can make changes. So we make changes to the database, we do things, and every so often we probably want to um, anchor um, some of this data to a public blockchain. That's what it's all about. We want to be able to be in a position where we can prove using blockchain based records that this data um, is um, being, not being tampered with and that its origin dates are what it says it is. So we do this through the submit proof command and I'm going to submit a proof for version 5 and we support a bunch of different blockchains. I'm going to use Hedera, of course. Hedera is the fastest of all the blockchains we support at the moment, so it's really great for doing demos with. So we've submitted a proof, um, and now we can have a look at the proof um, and see what's going on with it. So what's happened now is we've hashed all the documents in that version of the database, and we've taken the root hash um, of a Merkle tree of those documents and anchored it to the Hedera blockchain. And if we look at the proof, we can see that it's pending. It's going to take um, usually less than a minute for um, proofs from uh, Proof Center Hedera to confirm. So let's have another quick look. And there we go, it's, um, it's now valid, uh, which means that the um, hash for all of the documents in the database at this state have been um, anchored um, to the Hedera blockchain. And you can see here, here's the transaction link. Um, and I'm on the test net here, but um, you know, it might as well just be the main net. And it could be Ethereum, or it could be Bitcoin, or it could be something else as well. Um, we can also um, have a look at this proof in JSON format. You'll see down the bottom there's a proof and it's a binary string. The JSON string shows us the exact sequence of hashes that link um, our data to the blockchain proof. Um, and you might see as we go on, you'll see that that can, that tree can be deeper depending on how many documents you've got in your database and whether you're proving an entire database in one hit or an individual document. But it's more or less the same information as before, just with um, the binary part spelled out. Now, if we want, um, we can get a proof for an individual document. So let's do that um, now with the get document proof command. And here you see um, we've got an approve. It's in a very similar format. Uh, if we now um, add in that we want to get it for a particular version and put it in JSON format, um, we can see 
um, the exact sequence of hashes that link that individual document to the hash we placed on the Hedera blockchain. So this is a proof for just that document and nothing else, independent of everything else that was in the database. So this is what you could um, take to court and prove that you know no one had tampered with this document or if, it, you, if you put your will in or something, this could um, prove the effective date of it. And we also in the database, we have a bunch of other commands, but you can look at the complete history um, of a particular um, document or documents. So here we see all the different versions of the document that has my name in it. Um, some of these have not been proven because we didn't submit a proof for these versions of the document. But here at some point we come to a checkpoint and we submit a proof. And you can see we can see exactly when um, these documents started and ended their um, life. So that's a really quick overview of ProvenDB. As I said before, it's MongoDB compatible. It integrates with blockchains such as Hedera and Ethereum and Bitcoin. And the idea here is that you can use these blockchain proofs to prove the integrity um, or the origin, date and ownership of the data in the database. So that's ProvenDB. Now, Proofable is an API that we um, also make available and the Provable API, if you want to think about it, is a bring your own database solution or bring your own data. We don't in this case store the data. We're essentially giving you access to the API that allows you to anchor tons and tons of data um, to the blockchain in a single transaction. So let's take a look. We'll start by having a look at our, our command line interface to Provable. Um, so here I'm going to create a proof and um, what this is saying, using the Proofable CLI, I'm going to create a proof. I'm going to anchor it to the Hedera mainnet. I'm going to include metadata, which means I'm going to include all of the file um, timestamp and ownership data. And I'm going to do it for dot, which is, of course, the current directory. So if I run that command, um, it's now hashed all of the documents in this directory, as well as their timestamp and other metadata. And it's created a structure which is now being anchored to the Hedera blockchain. And here you can see again how fast there it is because we took these 77 key values, created root hash and anchored it to Hedera um, in just a couple of seconds. And you've got the Hedera information here. The proof itself is in a file um, called dot proofable that we will use in the next um, command. So um, if we want to check to make sure that nothing has changed in this directory, we would use the verify proof command. Um, here we're specifying the dot proofable is the file containing the, um, the proof information. I'll show you what's inside there in a minute. Um, and we'll check against everything that's in the directory. Everything passes, nothing has changed. Now, if I was to change something, so I'm just gonna modify one of the files in this directory. And now if I do that um, validation again, Right, you can see that um, we have a failure. If we look up here, we'll see that this file was modified, the contents were modified, as well as the um, change and modification timestamp, and the size has changed. So if someone even just touched the file, moved it around, um, these things would change and we'd, we'd know them. But all the, other, um, all the other proof information is intact. So this structure isn't being broken in any way. You've still got proof for all the other documents um, in this directory. What you do have, though, is you've detected some tampering, um, tampering or just normal changing, but that's up to you, I guess. So um, you can create a proof just like a get document proof before. We can create a proof for an individual file. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm creating a new proof for the perpetual motion design that I've created. And that just creates a, a, a proof structure out of the existing proof structure that proves that file and that file alone. Now, if we wanted to see what's in the proof, if you want to get an idea about what our proof structures look like, um, we have this dash D option, which creates what's called a dot file. And the dot file um, is a representation of the, it's not a Merkle tree, but it's similar to a Merkle tree that we use um, to uh, anchor individual digital assets to the root hash that goes on the blockchain. So let's have a look at that. I've just loaded that up in um, VS Code and it's a bit hard to read there. So I'll use the graph preview. 
and so what we have here is we have the entire tree up the top of the tree hope you can see this we have the what's anchored on the Hedera mainnet as we follow down this tree of hashes it brings us down to hashes that represent hashes for individual um, documents and then going further down the tree we find that we've got hashes that represent um, the size of the document um, the access date and so forth and this tree, which is sort of like a key value store that contains all of the information that we're um, using, uh, is what we can use to um, check uh, individual files or the entire group, um, their integrity and their timestamp. Uh, so um, finally, let's have a look at the proofable um, API. So that was the command line interface. Obviously, we don't um, always use a command line interface. Sometimes we want to... Um, obviously, usually we want to use code. So here's an example of some code that um, I've written to illustrate this. Um, this code, which I just foolishly deleted, um, works against an Oracle database. I didn't delete it, I just put it over there. In one. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're pulling some data out of Oracle and then once we've got it out, we create a try, which is um, the internal or the technical name for the proof structure that we create, that key value store you just saw. Um, we anchor it, and here we're anchoring it to Hedera. Um, and then later on, we can export it to a file, um, and then we can um, validate it. We can check the input values. We can see if anything's changed. Um, and we can do everything we did in the CLI. We can do very simply through this SDK. So if we want to um, uh, run that file, I will open it in the terminal. And if I run Um, you'll see the output looks very similar to what we, we just did. I'm currently reading from this remote Oracle database. Um, all the data has been pulled out of Oracle. Um, we've um, hashed it all. We've sent it up to Hedera. We're waiting for Hedera to confirm it. It's confirmed. And now we have this try structure, which is essentially the same information that you saw with the CLI. Um, now I'm um, issuing some commands to tamper with the data uh, in Oracle, and we'll soon see the validated proof. This is before tampering. Everything's fine. 10,000 keys um, examined, all of them are fine. This time I've actually altered the data in Oracle, um, done the same thing. Anyway, so that's, um, that's ProvenDB and Proofable. I hope that's been useful. Let us know what you think. Um, come and visit us at provendb.com or proofable.io. Thanks a lot.